All right. Welcome back to another episode on my channel. Today, I am joined by a very special guest, Christoph Weigert. Now, Christoph reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and said, you know, hey, I, I see what you're doing. You're talking a lot about imagination. I'm an imagination researcher. I've been doing active research in the realms of imagination. Can we connect? I'd love to guide you through my process. Now, that happened. And what came out of that led to this video that you're about to watch today, an interview with Christoph, Christoph, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, Josiah, thank you for having me, uh, for being open to check out the process and go on your own journey with me. Um, yes. Thank you, everyone who is tuning in, listening, watching. I'm happy to be here. And I'm excited to have you here also. So, Christoph, you've been working in the field of imagination for about eight years now. Uh, your primary occupation is that of a physical therapist, as well as a coach, and you do a lot of work with harmonizing the body-mind connection, which I think obviously equips you to do this, this work in imagination. Uh, it, it just naturally flows out of that. So if you could just take a moment and kind of introduce yourself and uh, share a little bit about how you got introduced to the idea of imagination. Mm -hmm. Like bigger background, I was big into soccer. I was injured a lot, so I got treated a lot by physiotherapists and osteopaths. Mm. So this brought me on this path of healing. From the path of healing, I got into the path of like mind-body connection, mind expansion. And yeah, one day in an online forum, I ran across the sentence, which kind of went like this. If you pitch personal will against imagination, the imagination always comes out as the winner mm. and this is what hooked me like to this concept of like imagination i need to know more about it I say that quote more. one more time if you pitch like personal will against yes someone's imagination the imagination always comes out as the winner so essentially imagination is more powerful than personal will yeah. And and that concept is like, whoa, I gotta I gotta learn more about imagination. Yeah. Made me stop in my tracks and made me like yeah. wonder like how can I find out more about imagination. So what was your process? How did you how did you start to research the idea of imagination initially? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I somehow I ended up with John Rappaport's Matrix trilogies, which go really deep into yeah, all things imagination. Mm. And I devoured them for some years and was doing like many, many exercises on my on myself and also like in a journaling writing process. And then I also started to do Qigong in, in New York. And I was also fascinated by this because Qigong and also like the martial arts in general, like they study the body, breath, and mind connection and they also use a lot of imagination so it's like also physically applied imagination mm, gotcha okay uh so i forgot to mention in the introduction of you here christoph you're also an author and also a novelist uh at what point did you decide to to write your book tell us a little bit about that yeah so it started with a friend i, I was so 2015 i moved to berlin I connected with a friend from the same forum that I read the sentence in and he was writing a book back then and he was such a big inspiration to me like we lived together and I was like shit I want to write my own book <laughs> so I had a few false starts mm. and then 2018 I started with the novel but it took some years and in the meantime yeah, it was more like a spontaneous thing. I was like, okay, all the stuff I've learned about the imagination, I want to like polish it and extract like the highlights and what's like, I think the most important aspects for people. And yeah, then I wrote it and it was, yeah, I loved it. And yeah, also when you start writing, you know, like your self image also changes because then you're like, <laughs> At the beginning, it feels a bit surreal, but then more and more becomes more of your nature. Like, okay, I'm an author now, which feels good to mm. say. 
Yeah, it's a state. You started you started to occupy mm-hmm. the state as you, as you became accustomed to it. So the title of your book I have it written here is uh, "Imagination: The Secret Nobody Talks About." Mm-hmm. What an interesting title! And so I, when you first told me that that this was the first book that you had read, and you then told me that you actually found the work of Neville, which is what connected you and I, after having written this book. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, which kind of like um, leads the title of the book at absurdum. Like it makes it like questionable. <laughs> <laughs> because then I found out, okay, it's, it's amazing that there's another mm. author who's like all about imagination. Yeah. Um, a friend recommended him to me. He was like, oh, he's also talking about imagination all the time, like you. And I was like, okay. Um, yeah, so it's just cool, you know, like to be confirmed, like, okay, there's many people like since decades or centuries talking about imagination mm-hmm. and i was also really attracted by neville like from his point of view of like reinterpreting the bible yes. as like this massive work of imagination and manifestation yes so yeah it was like coming home in a in a way mm. yeah and, like, coming coming like full circle in some endless loop like yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i i think i think all of us listening in this moment can identify with that feeling associated with neville's work it is definitely there's a homecoming aspect to it okay so when i introduced you i, I talked about how you're an um, imagination researcher now at this point and i i think we should get into a little bit of that because i i kind of went through your process you you spent some time walking yeah. me through your process tell me a little bit about what your research practice is how you're going about it and what what the goal is. Yeah. So the first years was just by myself, like doing different imagination exercises, lots of writing. But this process I came to you with, it's like a partner process. It's something that Sean Rappaport and a former hypnotherapist, they pioneered together. And when I was reading their source material, I was like, blown away because it seemed like really going deep with people like Mm. some psychic events like um lighters like slipping over a table or people stumbling by chance not looking for it into past lives or like some remote viewing incidents Mm -hmm. and i didn't even want to write about this in my book because i did not confirm it for myself, I was just like fascinated by it, by it, but it seemed like too far out. So mm. I had a few false starts. Like I was trying it with people. I also had someone tap into a past life. I had someone like have like just amazing flowing days after doing a few sessions, but we, people always dropped out and I didn't have the, the overall vision to like really go for it, go all in. And since this year I'm going all in, on this technique and doing like many, many, many sessions with many different people and having some quite cool yeah, experiences, which makes me want to go on and also like now share it in public with people. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the basic premise here, as I experienced it, uh, so many of us are, are, are very accustomed to imagining <clears throat> specifically in the way that Neville teaches, right? Which is, is this, you know, process of, of dimming the senses, meaning you go into a meditative state, you kind of withdraw your attention from what's going on around you, go into this inner place of silence, and then from there create some sort of imagery. And if you're using imagination, not just for entertainment purposes, but specifically for manifestation, generally this imagery is associated with something that you would like to experience 3D in your life. And so you you basically you you go in and you experience it ahead of time in your imagination with the intention of creating a relationship with it to where it then manifests. Now this is can be a very personal and very intimate process, but what you're offering, Christoph, is a witness to this process, and not just to this application of the process, but a witness to an imaginal journey in general. So you mentioned that you have research partners, people that you're working with to guide them. Talk a little bit about what a session with you looks like. What what is what is what happens in a session and what is their role and what is your role? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually like basic session can start. Um, do, do you, is there something you want to talk about? Like, is there like an image or thought you want to talk about? Then someone can say like, oh, I'm having this headache or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm always like, okay, if the headache were an image, what would it be? Like someone like hammering away in a quarry or what? Like something then usually comes up. We're like always like translating into it's something into like an image mm. if someone comes with like an issue yes or something they want to do and so we always need this like starting point <laughs> like we need to go through some portal into yes. the imaginary realm yeah yeah and from, okay and from there the magic of the process starts which i'm asking many 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 details of people how how does like what what's happening in the space like what objects are there C can you get any smell like when you touch them but also like shades of colors like how's the emotional atmosphere like give me like details details like what happens often when we're by ourselves we're like jumping over some details we get like this general view but it's not maybe like ultra hd so I'm helping people to like focus and like stay with the image, stay with it some more. And also like let a story happen. Um, what else is happening? Are there any people in it? So also like time progresses quite a bit. Like people can go on quite a journey that takes them to many different places. Mm. So yeah, it's like a longer, longer process, which keeps you in this in this imaginal realm. So in my experience practicing with imagination, I find that it really is the details that stabilize the picture by adding elements of realness. So Neville talks a lot about adding this, adding sensory impressions to your imaginal pictures. So it's like, what does it feel like? What does it smell like? What does it taste? You know, what does it look like? What are you hearing? And I think really developing the ability to do all of that requires an intense amount of attention and focus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that perhaps in, in today's civilization, a lot of us maybe don't have, have we have maybe we haven't invested in cultivating that intense amount of focus and concentration. So when what I experienced when I was sitting with you, I, I think that yes, had I been doing the same thing by myself, I absolutely would have skipped over details. But having you sitting there holding the space for me energetically and asking me to, to, to take a look at these things, you were stabilizing the energy of the picture and thus making it become more real during the time in which we were in the scene. And I think that that's that if, if the flow of imagination when you're in that is an energetic stream, I think that this would, would widen, broaden and stabilize it to help you go deeper into the picture. And I think that that's what I experienced in our session together. And I think that that's also really the state that you're now exploring uh, with these research partners. It's like, okay, let's let's see what is our starting image and then let's stabilize it so that we can go deeper into it and, and get more out of it. And I think what's also important to add is on top of the more detailed sensory, mm. um, deeper sensation or like like deeper perceptions along our sensory channels we can also ask i think we had this with like a tree like we can look into the tree like what's going on in the tree or like what is the tree thinking or when we did our session i think you found the treasure box like mm -hmm. below the tree or in the ground mm -hmm. so we can also go um, beyond the basic ways of exploring a scene with only our senses we can go on a thought yeah. level so we're opening up even more doors there mm -hmm. yes so i think a lot of people and this is an important point i feel a lot of people when practicing ima with imagination the way that neville teaches they do start with an agenda mm -hmm. meaning that you know they're like okay i'm i'm gonna lay down and and, and go into this you know state akin to sleep that neville teaches of that that you know, in between state, that hypnagogic state, and I'm going to imagine 
this new job that I want, or this new partner that I want to get married to, or this new trip, or you know, uh, something new, new house, or something, you know, something tangible, physical, real. And that's absolutely going into it with an agenda. You don't always start with an agenda. You, I mean, you you let the client start bring an agenda to you, but it yeah. seems like a lot of a lot of times you're starting just in, in kind of an open book and seeing where the energy guides. Is is that accurate? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And also what what I noticed sometimes. So I'm telling people at the beginning, like, listen, if you see something or you just get like vague impressions or you're like totally making it up, you're like lying to me, quote unquote, that's all fine because it all adds to your power of imagination down the road. Mm. Mm. And also some, what I think was also like a key benefit that people get, what I noticed a few times, people then their voice changes. And I would call it like, like children when they're like freely making something up like, oh, I'm this dragon. No, 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 no. So they're having fun, like making something up and they realize on some level that they're making it up. But it's also totally like easy, you know, not, not like agenda, like I need to have this goal. They're just like, creating exploring it also brings some easy like some ease into the mm. process mm -hmm. i think that's that's one of the things i love about your approach to this meaning that it's not always an immediate you know very serious agenda it's like no this this is our imagination this is the most creative element in humans let's play you know, and 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 then being willing to hold space for for that play, understanding that in that process of play, there is a ton of value that comes out. Like you said, it's it's like exercising. It's like going to the gym for your imagination. It's it's practicing. And like you said, even if even if they're you know fabricating, they're not really seeing something. They're just making something up. They're still exercising that faculty of imagination. And I I think that that's that's very rich as well. Uh, you had you had mentioned when when we were talking prior to to doing this video. You had mentioned how you uh, really find that imagination can be a tool to do something you described as a mental detox. And I'm wondering if you can describe for me a little bit about what you mean by that. Mm -hmm. So mental toxism would then mm -hmm. in turn be for me like stuff that's stuck in our psyche that we never like fully digested, be it a former relationship, like a job we had. So we can revisit, which goes along the lines of revision mm, <laughs> from Neville. Yes. And yeah, but put it in a new in a new storyline. Okay, let's go with our former boss whom we can't stand to the zoo. And I don't know, have him like play with the monkeys and you know, like also add this element of fun around this mm. to, to the stuff that oftentimes bear so heavy on our psyches yeah and we're always like often our problem is we have like a few things in our mind we're like replaying replaying it's always the same scene you know and i can't stop thinking about it yeah but if i think about it in a few different ways i take agency over it like i yeah i i change it like i recreate it in different ways this is what i would call mental detox yeah that makes a, that makes a lot of sense you, like you said taking agency that's that's the key aspect of it when when you're able to reshape it recast it i mean this is what neville talks about when he says you know let's go down to the potter's house you know the mm -hmm. vessel was was misshapen let's remake it it's the same clay but we're just going to reshape it and all all that we're ever experiencing you know we're, we're taught that really whatever we're experiencing in the 3d is also being experienced in imagination it's just it's the clay. So when we learn to take agency over it in the way that you're describing, to to rework, reshape the vessel, reshape the energy that was that event, be more playful about it, uh, lift it to an, another level of consciousness, it, it really can completely reshape it. It can remove uh, a lot of the, the, the negative energy that may have been stuck there. Uh, you can kind of free it up and, and release it. And like you said, you know, we, we tend to I, I can speak from experience. I identify with, you know, at, at times in my life, I've, I've had some sort of event that I've gotten stuck on mentally and I just keep replaying it. It's like a broken record over and over in my mind. And I like what you're describing as a technique 
for going back to that scene, but rather than replaying it the way that it happened, completely bringing it to a whole different dimension of experience. It's completely out, outside of any of the physical aspects, you know, let's go, let's go visit Venus with this person mm. and, mm-hmm. you know, and fly through the clouds or whatever it is, like something that's a little bit bizarre, but what it's doing is, is it's, it's catalyzing and kind of reshaping and releasing and really changing fundamentally that energy and recasting it in a whole new way. Yeah. That's pretty a, awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's pretty awesome. And, and it's, I think it's one thing to do that ourselves, but when you've got someone holding that space for you and guiding you through it, that, I mean, that's like, like we talked about having that person anchor the energy you know, it's like, there's, there's, it, it's going to be dealt with. Like you're, you're not, you're not going to, in your imagination, just kind of jump over. It's like, no, you're going to hold it there until that, that outcome is, is achieved, which is incredibly valuable. It's very cool. And that's also partly like what, what's my job or what my job can be in these sessions when I have someone like, oh, now I'm seeing my boss. Like, and if, if I see people are like stuck, I like to give them like, three four different like options like would it be cool if that happened or this happened Mm -hmm. like i don't want to tell someone like what to do which again would be like suggestion like like the hypnotic state Mm -hmm. i want to help people make their own decisions and create their own storylines but if i feel like "Ah, okay um imaginative engine is like not running on full speed like i try to give them options and then usually like people know it so well like what they really want to do like which of these options they favor so again they are um getting into this agency and Mm -hmm. yeah yeah very cool okay so Having done these sessions, and you you mentioned you've done a lot of them, multiple people. You do have a, a research partner that you are consistently sitting with twice per week over the long term to really develop an understanding of, of everything that you're sharing with us, what these spaces are, what the tools are for, for working with them. Uh, share a little bit about some of the key things that you're finding from these sessions. Mm-hmm. One of the first things is, yeah, we want to have like a powerful starting image which which we use a lot on how we we work with our body in the physical and i ask for example do you feel anything in your body yeah i have this like red sphere in my upper left chest and then we can use this as a starting point for example and explore from there Mm. Or again, and, and then we go into the scene and we explore a bit. And we also like you and I, when we had our session, like at one point you were saying like, oh, I'm having this soft feeling in my chest. Mm-hmm. So then I also like to go back and forth between like the physical and the imaginal realm mm. to again, strengthen the the bonds. Yes. <laughs> Thinning the wheel that that's between the worlds. So ultimately, our power of imagination gets also more of a foothold in our physical reality. Mm-hmm. When, when we had talked earlier, you, you mentioned how there's a lot of research being conducted now at the level of, of universities, athletic departments, uh, I'm sure all sorts of athletic organizations about specifically linking I think that the the university term is or educational term is is um uh mental rehearsal. So like mentally rehearsing in imagination what the activity is in the physical, specifically to begin to build the bridge between the the imaginal realm mm-hmm. and the physical realm. Yeah. Do you do you have experience applying uh, that spe- that type of approach specifically to people that you've worked with? Well, I stumbled over this research just two weeks ago. Like one mm-hmm. of the key findings is, so they are doing like research in this since the 1880s. This like, mm-hmm. let's, let's say a golf swing or whatever. Yeah. And I like to call it like micro manifestations because they are like imagining something. And then when at the end of it comes out, like the golden golf swing, they manifested it in a way yeah. you, you could argue. Yeah. 
And what, what they found is like time and velocity, like speed in the imaginal realm is like the same as in the physical. Mm. Like our subconscious or whatever feels like really like, okay, in the imaginal, I have to go as fast as in the physical. So how I made use of this, because I tell people, no, you can go faster if you want to. But it really helps people to get into the scene and like, let's say, just like walk or another physical activity they feel really familiar with and like that's mm. comfortable. So, yeah, I just now I just have people like walking maybe along the beach, along different areas to really help their subconscious transition in like a calm and slow fashion into the imaginal realm mm -hmm. and this also helps to increase the level of reality of the imaginal yes yeah Har harmonizing bringing together building that link which is perfect segue to the next thing that I want to ask you about, which is, have you used this as a as a guide, as as a coach? Have you used this to help people manifest their goals? And if so, do you have a success story that you can share with us? Yeah, I have two stories along these lines. Like it was again, as you said, we didn't go into it with this agenda, mm. but something came out. So with one friend, she was. So she was doing, I would call it like regular manifestation mm -hmm. practice around a new job. So we started a scene, like, I don't know how we started, but then she was like, oh, I'm feeling pulled to this like job and whatever. So we really explored it like in slow motion with like more detail, like mm. how does your new place look like? What are the feelings? What kind of like people come over when you're hosting a party at your, at your new place? So I took her by the hand and we went like really slow. Mm -hmm. And she was like, after the session already, like, oh yeah, I, like I played it many times in my mind, but never that level of detail and reality to it. Mm. And yeah, then a week later she got the job and she called it like effortlessly. Wow. So, yeah. I like that because I'm still like why I'm doing so many like research sessions because I'm looking for different benefits that people can have mm -hmm. from these sessions. Mm -hmm. And the other one was for someone else. And she was asking me like, why are you doing these sessions? Like, what is your intention? And I was sharing like basically research. I want to find out like, what's going on. And she was like, okay, so now I'm just... So it wasn't German. I have to think how to translate it. I'm just going to let myself like go with it, like float with the mm. session, mm -hmm. like join you on this like journey, like floating. Yeah. And she was, she was saying it in like, like a literal sense, right? She was like, okay, I'm just going to flow, flow, float with this session. And to give you an example, how I can translate, like how can I can start a journey. So I was asking, okay, where are you floating then? Like what's, and then it clicked for her already. It was like, oh, yeah, I'm in this red little ship on the ocean. And it's like the waves and whatever. And from this, we went to a city, which she was about to go on a holi tri holiday trip to. And she ended up dancing with like a tall, I think, blue-eyed stranger in like a really beautiful environment. And two days into her actual holiday, she writes to me like, oh, yeah, like about our session together. Um, already in my second day, it manifested like I was dancing with this handsome stranger. And while I was dancing, like while the story was unfolding, um, I was giggling because I realized like shit, it's like this session is coming true. And I think that also speaks to another power of like manifestation, also like what, what, what Neville is teaching, what you're teaching. I think it's nice to to manifest what you want and that that you 
get it. But like the side benefit that I would say is even bigger is we learn about how manifestation itself works, like how creation works. It's like this amazing meta skill. It's not about mm-hmm. only like the goal and the end result, but like, and what, she, what, what had her um, being amazed and fascinated, like she, I'm like in this, in this point of my life where like my dream former dream imagination journey and reality intersect and i think that's a really magical um scenario for every one of us Mm. yes i i think everyone listening would absolutely agree that there's there's so oh that's so rich there's so much there uh understanding that you know the meta skill aspect of this this is not just something we use very tactically to create specific outcomes we're also learning our in in a, in a way uh, merging with our fundamental nature as we're playing with imagination which is that's just the coolest thing okay so uh thank you for those success stories those are those are pretty awesome i have to ask you now about uh what are you really finding that you think is would be most salient to the people uh watching or, or listening to this interview what are you finding from these research sessions that you really want to convey as as key points of value Mm -hmm. i would say it's really about opening up the imagination and going in your imagination to places you cannot go on yeah in our physical realm Mm. and like really allowing yourself to what you also alluded to maybe to go to venus or like talk to clouds um because yeah i think it's so beautiful for our for our spirit for our soul to um, to to make these journeys and not not be uh, not be tied up by reality and have our desires also dictated by reality Mm -hmm. because our desires we can fulfill on a physical realm are limited in a way okay maybe the significant other person maybe like a yacht maybe i don't know but so so my research partner he's really big into like the five elements from from taoism Mm -hmm. and so he wants to find out more about them so we were talking about a lot about fire and like what's going on for fire what is fire thinking like what's really like the essence behind fire so he was then like transforming or like taking up the viewpoint the sensation of fire fire burning wood so he was like going through all these different um sensations which was like really deeply satisfying for him on his spiritual journey because he's like really focused on his spiritual journey. Mm. And yeah, I think it has a lot of potential there to to connect you with desires that are not easily fulfill, fulfillable in the physical world, mm-hmm. but that you might still want to experience or maybe you want to fly. Mm-hmm. Um explore another dimension Mm -hmm. i i love this it's it's the idea of 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 not limiting you know neville talks about how being human is the absolute limit of contraction and opacity it's like this is as dense Mm. as as the source power that we are can can really get and and still retain you know self self self-awareness so it's like this this is the limit of density so why limit our imagination only to density why not allow ourselves to explore other realms to go beyond to play in these other areas and you know you had, you had mentioned uh you know an outrageousness there's there's you know you can be extravagant you know in your imagination in a way that that most people wouldn't even dream of if they're stuck in this in this dense layer of of you know just physical reality you know you can really take off the lid and and really you know you can create your own worlds you can create your own universes you can you can create your own rules <laughs> or delete all the rules right yeah it's really fun i would say it's like humor and fun it's like mm. really massive element yeah which can be lacking 
sometimes if we're like mm. trying to have like this goal and we're like yes. focusing on the goal and if you don't yes. get to the goal we're like uh, disillusioned disappointed so it brings really like this light-hearted um sense to the whole area of imagination mm. so important yeah yeah there's there's you know there's there's so much energy in joy right mm. like energy is is a is a joy is a creative energy and and i i think that when we can you know tap into i i get comments a lot or messages uh from from various people who who watch my my videos or connect with me my content and somehow and a lot of times they're saying you know oh this is really difficult for me to imagine this or i can't seem to hold the feeling of the wish fulfilled or you know i i, I get stuck with this or i can't focus long enough and it's like I think you're taking it too seriously. Like that's commonly, mm. I, that's mm. commonly how I respond. I think you're taking it a little too seriously. Like this is supposed to be fun. There's, there's a childlike aspect to it. There's a joyful, playful aspect to it. And if it feels hard, you're not doing it right. Like the, the, you have to kind of back off the expectation and be more playful, approach it, you know, on, on, um, you know, from, from a different energy and see if you can find, you know, even, even if you don't go straight into, let me manifest my agenda, you know, like start off just just playing, just playing it, even if it has nothing to do with a, a worldly agenda, just play. And through that process of playing, open up your your realms of possibilities. And then eventually, once you're really connected to that spirit of joy, then if your heart still desires, then you can begin to refocus on whatever your, your, your an agenda may be for your earthly experience. Yeah, that's totally it. Because... So what was my process with imagination? I fell in love with like the whole world word and the concepts like imagine, mm. imagination. It's like, mm. okay, I can imagine things. And then yeah. like all things around us were once in someone's imagination before yes. it turned into reality. So mm -hmm. it's really like a whole like massive concept to, to get into. And I remember back in 2015, I was like, reading or like john was presenting this idea like everything around us is imagination and can also be enhanced by imagination it's just mm -hmm. one one expression of reality it can mm -hmm. get better and when it like it like really hit me hard for like a day i was walking around just in, in the city in the park i looked at benches and i was like oh someone thought about like where to place this bench on how to create this park Mm -hmm. and like the city block and i was just walking with like massive like awe and really had like a field day of seeing the world from different eyes yes yes i i can relate to that uh, i've had i've had similar moments where you know for for <laughs> for a minute i'm profoundly connected to exactly what you're speaking on this idea of literally everything was conceived in the mind of a human and then somehow through this process manifest in a physical form, whatever that bridge was, you know, between, oh, I have this idea for a park. Okay, cool. And someone else comes along. Hey, there should be a bench there. What should the bench look like? Someone's like, Hey, I want to make a bench, you know? And it's like, it's just all these pieces fitting together. And the next thing you know, you've, you know, we're just walking through. And a lot of times we don't even stop and smell the roses in a manner mm. speaking to like really appreciate the fact that there's this park here and all the aspects that went into it. But when you begin to see it, like you said, with those other eyes, the world you start to realize exactly how wealthy the world is like this is rich like we're living we're living at a time that is really unlike any other time and i i just have to point out as as a futurist i i think a lot about this trajectory of of where we're headed as a species and the amount of time like that that gap between having an idea and when it can come into fruition, into physical form, is just shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. I mean, now we've got, you know, 3D printers that, you know, it's like in 24 hours, you can have whatever object you've, you've imagined and drawn, you can have that, you know, manifesting. And I think AI is accelerating mm -hmm. that as well by really helping us uh, simplify so many of these, of, these, of these processes. So it's like, this is, for one, you have to really respect and appreciate where we are now. And then also, you know, begin to take agency over your imagination, understanding that it's only going to get more important going forward in this trajectory of human history unfolding. It's only going to get more important to be very imaginally awake and adept 
right? And and to you know practice in some of these realms because you know AI can do a lot, but there's one thing AI doesn't really do the same way that a human does, and that is of course imagine. Uh, imagination of an of an AI is is limited in some way, whereas imagination of of a human is really only limited in the way that we choose to limit it. And I think that that right there is 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 quite a meaningful revelation. So with that being said, Christoph, I'm going to invite you to share with us some of the tools that you have found that really help people with experiencing a vivid imagination. Mm -hmm. First, and one of the most important tools is the partner that you can mm. do it yes. with because it's the witness. And like one of the basic functions is it's super simple. You say something and I just confirm <laughs> and I confirm <laughs> and I okay it. I will never say, and this is another key point, like mm. parents do to their children, like this is not true. This is not real. Like what you're seeing, like, like sh shut up. Like that's the key moment where we're like crushing our imagination mm. when yes. we're like a few years old. So we're kind of like reversing this trend. Like I'm okaying everything. I'm encouraging. I'm like, okay, tell me more. I like mm. where you're going. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. to to delve into your imagination yeah so yeah the person is a really <clears throat> key tool the the witness yep then the body is another tool like when we like move our body like we can even like we were experimenting with it like okay i'm walking in the scene like i'm also standing up like while we're talking in my physical body, maybe my body wants to like move a bit. So I'm again, like connecting the physical and the imaginal mm -hmm. from, I'm from both sides. I'm moving on both sides. So mm -hmm. I'm again, bringing them closer together, which I think is, is amazing. Mm. Um, yeah. Another one would be a scaling technique, which we're indebted to Fred Dodson for bringing it to the world. I don't know where he has it from, but <laughs> I yes. know it from him. And it's the idea. So let's take a scale from one to 10. And five would be like, like a city, you know, it's like a city. It's great. It has some skyscrapers, has some playgrounds. It's not amazing, but you know, it has people, people have jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and then let's go down the scale. Okay. There's like lots of like, weeds growing through the sidewalks uh, there's trash on the on also on the sidewalks like people's emotional expression on the face is a bit worse um there's less laughing children on on playgrounds more dog poop whatever and you, you could go down even more uh, and this also happens really on a physical level like i was doing mm -hmm. this with someone I was doing Qigong with and he was like a bit of hangover from the day before. So we were starting at five after our Qigong session. I was like, yeah, I'm feeling good. You know, after the session, four was like, oh, yeah, still feeling a bit like the hangover, a bit complainy. And with level three, he was like, oh, no, I have to almost like vomit. <laughs> so that's how you can go down. But when you go down, it all, you can also go up up would be uh, the city like okay the skyscrapers look actually like beautiful you know like maybe like gaudi from barcelona who made a lot of beautiful architecture like this some of that mixed into the city mm. people wear amazing colors um different different languages uh, people are dancing on the street <clears throat> you could go up even another level like flying cars or, or whatever so if you take this approach to notch things like a level or two down and up it again brings more um a bit like swing i don't know if it's a correct term like like swinging ability to reality you make it more like mobile more flexible more malleable, yeah more malleable malleable yep yeah. So you, we again, we get out of this, like, okay, there's like one reality and with like, you know, there's only like one version of reality and we go into proliferation where we're having options 
which again, like imagination loves because imagination is all about creating different realities. Like we have our, our um, consensus reality that mm -hmm. we're having like all of us living together in it right now. But the world could be like so many different shapes at this moment even. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're paying like tribute to when we're using this technique of scaling. Yes. Um, yeah, so these are three important tools. Mm -hmm. um, you had also mentioned uh, playing mm. with, with focus. Can you talk mm. a little bit about that? Focus is yeah. also important mm -hmm. because so when we're in the scene, I can ho home in on an object mm -hmm. and I can go on even like deeper focus. I was like, okay, go like really close to this object, like maybe even go on like a molecular level of this vase or like are there is there any like cracks like tiny cracks in this vase or like what's happening inside the vase i can look at the vase and i can look at all the surroundings so i'm opening my focus a bit and then i can open my focus even more i can look up like what's happening in the sky what's happening um towards the horizon what's happening behind me so i want to open up mm -hmm. and i can narrow mm -hmm. i can zoom in on like a really like detailed level mm -hmm. and then open up again and also what what's another maybe layer if you can always use everything as a portal like mm -hmm. for example when we were talking about like the tree and i would just tell you to yeah, you, you can imagine, you know, there's like a little portal hidden in the tree. Mm -hmm. How about stepping into the portal? And then I just ask, okay, well, what do you see now? So we can always like make jumps, like we can use anything as a portal and just mm -hmm. go to other places and again, see um, where our subconscious wants to bring us. Mm -hmm. So like narrowing, opening, maybe jumping. <laughs> To another mm -hmm. yeah place. nearing opening jumping malleability through scale mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. uh, you'd also mentioned ways to tap into inherent energy and you mentioned erotic journeys and breath work mm -hmm. can you talk a little mm -hmm. about those two mm -hmm. yeah so breath work uh i'm not sure if i have used it in this context already mm -hmm. but but mm -hmm. i will like mm. i certainly will but erotic energy yeah um there was this one session with a friend uh, and he tapped into like this erotic fantasies and we like really went for it and it uh, had erotic encounters with angels and, and ghosts and, and whatnot <laughs> mm. and fabulous creatures and afterwards i was like of course i mean People have like strong erotic fantasies usually mm -hmm. that, that are really charged with energy. And I've done some sessions with people who from the get-go, they were framed like, okay, erotic fantasy exploration. So it's really hard. So when people really then get into their erotic encounter and the encounter deepens, like people don't really want to like get away from it, like open the focus again. <laughs> so it's like yeah the energy is like really like focused like goal mm -hmm. oriented mm -hmm. but yeah i think it's really beautiful um to help people like explore in that realm mm -hmm. and again usually like people think like oh I have this fantasy or, like a threesome or whatever but if you again take the lid off of it maybe you go you know on venus and you have affairs with gods and mm. Mm -hmm. um so there's a lot of potential in it but again with everything that's in the imagination it's very intimate many people are afraid of their fantasies or imagination in general because they are afraid like what they might encounter mm. when like really jumping in that's something to be uh, kept in mind mm -hmm. that, and i think that's 
I think everything that we placed a taboo on in society, it also holds a lot of like charge, a lot of energy. Yes. So if you can, I, if I can go at it in like a playful way, but still like like approach it, you know, like respect and anything. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of like yeah energy that can be freed up. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense, and I think uh, I think that's that's the key point. There is if you can <clears throat> artfully tap into areas domains even that are already holding tremendous amounts of psychic energy and you can learn to again artfully tap into that and then shape it and direct it that can actually power and and um and propel your imagination mm -hmm. your, your your journey your your whole experience by kind of artfully tapping into that and then and then directing it in the in the desired uh, direction so i think that it, it is as you're saying, uh, an important tool uh, to be aware of. In fact, I, you've you've given several here that I encourage everyone who's who's participating in this to pay attention to and to practice with. Practice with these different uh, tools that we're talking about. Okay, so final thing I, I want to bring up here: What about the people who I can hear them psychically? They're saying right now, okay, this sounds great, but my imagination just doesn't work this way. It's just it's you know, you guys, you must have just been born with vivid imaginations. I I just mm. don't have that. Can mm. you know? Can you help me? What would you say to those people? Yeah, so I'm thinking now about my own journey. So again, mm. I was playing playing soccer, like that was my life. I didn't do any uh, any other things. Mm. Um, yeah, you can look at imagination around you, like people who use their own imagination and just start from this perspective, like, okay, this skyscraper is imagination manifested this park is imagination manifested read a book from the perspective maybe some images come up there for you go into a museum look at different artists like <laughs> what was happening in their imagination mm. and maybe even like and what you mentioned what was super nice um you said okay maybe like what you try to imagine is like too boring for you it doesn't catch your attention so maybe you want to use something from pop imagination, be it like a movie. Like I had someone then explore like Harry Potter and Hogwarts and suddenly mm. their imagination like made a jump to mm. more energy, more excitement. So you, can, mm -hmm. so you can look around like what's already exciting you, maybe from the outside and use the outside to get into your inner, your own personal imagination. Yeah, I, I think that's a valuable tip. Uh, I, lo I love this idea of, well, just start with what's already around you and you know, use that as an inspiration or, you know, someone's already mapped out a world. I mean, you've got you've got all these superhero movies and you've got the Marvel Universe, the DC Universe, the Star Trek Universe, you know, the Star Wars Universe. Maybe maybe start with something that's already has some some depth and richness and color and start there. Use that as as a, a way to begin to provoke your engagement and obviously following your own excitement, I think is is really uh, important as well. Okay, beautiful. Um, you had also mentioned, I just want to throw this out there for people who would resonate with this. You mentioned uh, using the Psalms, meaning the, the biblical Psalms. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it happened this week. I, I was listening to a Joseph Murphy talk mm -hmm. about the Psalms. Yeah. Because I'm all the time thinking, okay, how can I streamline the process? How can I make it more powerful, more quicker for people? And then I thought, like, okay, the Psalms, like, they portray, like, crazy images that have a yes, lot of inherent power. Yes. And maybe even more for some people who anyway is connected with, with these. So read the Psalm, look at the image that comes up, and then start exploring the image with all the tools we gave you like scale the song <laughs> yeah um, yeah so what i what i love about that as a as an in an invitation is that we all know that the psalms have been around for a very very long time and hundreds of millions if not billions of people have connected to them psychically connected to the psalms so there is a huge massive reservoir of psychic energy contained therein, not only from the original psalmist, but from all of the people placing their attention 
upon it over the eons. So really that in, it's kind of an ace card in terms of mm-hmm. tapping into a thought form and, and, and running with that thought form as a, as a, a, a trigger to, to kind of cause a blooming of your imagination to be able to go deeper into the image. So I love that. That stood out to me when you mentioned that. I was like, wow, I, mm. I had seen some of, um, some of that Brian, um, the videos that mm-hmm. Brian Scott has posted mm-hmm. about Joseph Murphy and the Psalms. Mm-hmm. I'd seen some of that, but the way that you're, you're talking about here about really using them as this trigger for expanding imagination because of the, the rich psychic energy that they hold. That's beautiful. And I, I think that that's a, a, a very awesome invitation. Also, I'm feeling inspired to, to try that for <laughs> myself and, and I'll have to report back to you how that goes uh, in terms of, you know, for science, right? We're doing it for science. Yes. <laughs> so cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Christoph, for making the time to, to join me and share some of your amazing insights uh, about the realms of imagination, what you're doing as a researcher, what your process is, uh, some of the tools that you've come across, some of the best practices, and just really like how how valuable it is to to really play is one of the key takeaways that I'm that I'm I'm taking from this conversation. Um, in terms of how to how to reach Christoph, I'm going to put all of his links in the description below. So go ahead, check out his work, connect with him, and if you're interested in a, in a guided journey with Christoph, reach out to him and see about scheduling one of those. And uh, any last words, uh, Christoph? Um, yeah, I'm just super happy that we got to have this conversation and I'm thankful to everyone who's watching this now or in the future. And yeah, I hope some people take the, the chance to change up their imaginative habits and have some fun and feel free to report back to me as well like with your own journeys and insights brilliant yeah thank you so much christoph until next time imagine wisely my friends and i'll talk to you again soon